we uh, we didn't like to be in jail, so we wanted to get out. And so there was a mysterious collection of uh, contacts, probably fancy with the Jack and some other people. And a like a Semtex charge was basically smuggled in, and we blew a hole in the uh, in the jail wall and ran for our dear lives, escaping through the shadowy streets and via a carriage. And we are now laying low in the free city, I think, where we have decided to hitch a ride to sail away from here because obviously we are wanted criminals and we should not be here. We also decided to go public and become heroes, so that's also good. And we're sailing to Argent Hold. Which Argent we we're, we're sailing uh, to the, the coastline uh, near uh, Ardent Crest, which is in the mountains, the Great Worm Spire. Oh yes, yes. Uh, because we want to go up there to return the various religious relic that we plundered from the Vaults of the Grey, and we need a bit of a change of scenery basically. We have also decided to make this expedition public in a way that we are heading there to reclaim it uh, from the bandits and monsters of the area to maybe clear out the point for the uh, now ruined harbor uh, and establish it as a, as a basically rebuild it, reclaim it and rebuild it. And that way we will cement our efforts as heroes and people will actually start liking us because I, I think now most people just despise us. That's sad. And yeah, that's it. That is yep. a, an effective recap from someone who wasn't here last session for the internet viewing audience, none of whom were here last session, because, of course, that session was offline only. Yes. Doesn't exist. Yep, it's true. I, I was not I'm here, and, and since I'm doing, doing the recording, that it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a secret session. I don't know what happened. Secret session. <coughs> uh... I you know, I think it's illegal to film doublets, so... Well, uh, with that recap, which was incredibly accurate for someone who wasn't here, I do have to say that, uh, you did find yourself in the phase of A, where Sophie and uh, Tariff went their separate ways, leaving you with ways to contact them, leaving you there with a carriage. And two horses, one of which was actually owned by Gilgalad. Uh, and as was said, Fancy did go around, I believe, advertising the, the expedition as well as securing a sponsor for it that was willing to supply the f necessary funds for things such as climbing gear and torches and whatnot as well as supplies for you and whatever passengers you do manage to acquire, attract, as it were. Uh, Fancy also did manage to tentatively secure a vessel that would bring you there, a small-ish fishing boat with people that were somewhat reluctant at first, but the mission, the the goal of the operation to bring those people who have been stuck here for such a long time since none of the boats were going anymore and they have family there and they really want to return and of course the occasional merchant really wanted to go there because there's money to be made that did sway them to at least give it a try the area around the the lady's eye as these kind of inland almost inland sea is called there as the the actual edge to the ocean is thoroughly barred off by, by reefs and corals and, well, rocks, really, isn't really the most dangerous one. Like, it's probably the safest area around the entire continent. There are rather massive beasts lingering in the in the mists here, some of which Demes might have even seen in his in initial voyage to the continent here. Ladies, I'm pretty safe. If it weren't for the fact that it doesn't seem to be safe anymore because there have been plenty of rumors in the sailors and just in the city in general that there have been a lot of sightings of rather large things usually and while they haven't really caused any big fatalities yet well they have certainly started nibbling on the occasional ship to the point where there's not only Ships not going to Ardencrest because the pier is destroyed. There are very few ships going in general because it's not a great idea. The Free City, unlike 
most other coastal cities, does have a small fleet of pretty much warships at this point. A small fleet being about exactly four that are patrolling around, trying to make it safe enough for the fishing boats and such to go around, but four of them just can't keep the entire Lady's Eye safe. Meaning that anyone who goes some distance from the free city really is on on their own. Uh, but do you have a ship that is willing to try? With a crew that seems reasonably competent. Uh, with zero seafaring background, I couldn't vet them even if Fancy wanted to. They looked confident. Whether they are, who knows. The ship is a bit of a, of a newer model than I used before. It is certainly newer than what Graham might be used to. Uh, however, compared to the vessels that, say, the outsider would use to travel the, the open seas, it's not quite there. Because most open sea vessels are not only armed, but also armored to the teeth. They are some of them are more steel than they are wood, and for good reason. Uh, that said, all this talking to people and running around and advertising and such probably would have taken a couple of days, maybe like two or three. Uh, how did the others of you spend your, your time in the free city? Where did you sleep? Where did you rest? What might you have done in your free time? I slept in my house that I own. Oh and, uh, yeah, that's how. Oh. <laughs> hey, Enrican. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you also did. What? Sleep in my house that I own. Oh okay. Yeah, Enrican basically traveled here a bit under the weather, to say the least. He's been Exhausted, unconscious, perhaps. basically. Uh, the yeah. the incredible power that he contained with that uh, necromantic ritual basically knocked him out. And he has been unresponsive. He has followed people around, probably. Maybe Graham, because he really recognizes him. But he has been very out of sorts. And then he woke up feeling like a giant because he slept in Demesa's house. Yes. Mm. Get nothing where whenever he turns, he hits yeah, his head. Oh! Oh, ho, ho. He's been going around like, you know, Yolly laughing inside Demesa's home. Everything is so cute. Yeah. So pint sized comparatively. Mm. So. But. Absolutely adorable. Um, basically. <laughs> Okay, so uh, basically what Demez is doing uh, is he's just kind of, you know, he knows people here. He's been checking up on his contacts and seeing if there's anything new. And there isn't really anything new. Nobody in the Free City, uh, you know, either they forgot that I asked them to look for things or they haven't found any new information or uh, I forgot to ask them in the first place because I was too flustered over my situation. So I just kind of ran around accomplishing, basically, friendship visits. Graham has been walking the city, bumping into this person and that. Well, looking at, looking at what there is to be looked at. Perhaps spent a little bit of time with Fancy, if she had the time to go look at, look at things, like attractions and whatnot. She'd probably seen them all before. Fancy's been really, really absorbed and has actually forgotten about showing Graham around a place and things. <laughs> she's uh, she's now taken upon this as her personal crusade to organize an expedition to uh, head for Ardent Crest, and uh, her time has been consumed uh, visiting with her contacts and uh, finding people who want to come along on the journey. Mm -hmm. Graham has been. Then walking the city alone, just looking at stuff, you know, talking to people he meet. Uh, really sort of low-key. Uh, he 
trying to slowly absorb what the hell's going on after talking to to Sophie and and and, and Fancy. You know, it's a little it's a nice place to to not have to talk to anyone <laughs> like that for a while. And since Enrikin is super slow and sleepy right now, uh, you know, he'll basically have asked if anyone needs some help with something, and if no one did, we'll just have gone and, you know, looked around the city. So, yeah. Let's see, uh, Gilgalad is probably going to spend his mornings uh, training his body mostly. Um, then have a simple lunch, continue his training with uh, prayer meditation. And during the evenings, he probably seeks out uh, Tarith to see how is his, uh, I guess, you know, quest, I guess, going. He was looking after all to uh, find some contacts of his own, if I remember correctly. Yes, Tariff was looking around, although the few days that you've been here weren't really enough for him to make any significant progress on that. Mm-hmm. He you. has sent out letters, letters and such and knocked on a few doors, but it takes a while. Mm-hmm. He's basically running after people who probably don't want to be found that easily. Yeah, he's probably going to spend most of his uh, time on that visit too you know, talk about the situation and try to see uh, if he can get any more details about uh, this whole Mephanis uh, deal. Mephanis was the blue Taninim's name, right? Uh, yes. Yes. That would be his routine, I guess, uh, for any number of days we have spent here. I don't think Enrique has done much. He just basically woke up this morning back to his senses. Uh, he would probably have loved to spend some time here uh, doing research and stuff, but, uh, you know, it's difficult to do that when you're not really there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, one morning, Dimes would basically actually see him get up and, like, be at the breakfast table if there is such. Um, Tiny breakfast table? The tiny breakfast table. He will sit on a on a in the sofa or something, <laughs> reading a newspaper if there is such a thing. I'm not sure if there are newspapers in this world. And uh, look out, you know, and actually actually seem to be at his senses. Uh, there are definitely newspapers. They are not exactly common, but printed printed books and printed newspaper are slowly becoming a thing indeed. The outsider bringing the printing press. I love the propaganda times. They're so impartial. <laughs> <laughs> the artist is great. I imagine this city is going to have all the like skeptical columnists and like it's yeah. going to be like you know, you know, like it's basically like Tumblr. Like the city. people, people, yeah, basically. Oh, people no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't. I don't want. We need to leave now. Because there's That's like how I understood it at least. Uh, all these sub communities that have all their own thing going on. Tom Super City. It's probably not that far off. Oh, I'm looking oh. out. There's like a man on fire. There's someone taking poop, like just eating it in front of everything, and see that's oh. But you know, they do that by their own free will, and you shouldn't judge them. No, well, I guess. Anarchun is not used to this sort of free spiritness. <laughs> Grab is not either. Uh, well, as it turns out, Dim is in his office slash apartment, really, or his his home. Uh, while he, while there were a couple like letters that were stuck under the door uh, when he arrived, like piles of old letters of people like wanting <laughs> him to find his old their their old like missing goat or I, something like I think it's the other lines. way around please get my give my daughter back I pay whatever you want and he's like ah it's whatever just throw that away <laughs> or I misplaced my heirloom please help uh, there does seem to be a new letter that has arrived just during these few days at some point 
this letter, unlike the others, the handwriting on it is pristine. It's almost art. There's a, a little, a little uh, stamp on it that makes it look very official, although what exactly the stamp means, Dimas wouldn't really know. Uh, it also seems to be ever so slightly perfumed. Not the kind of perfume you'd use to seduce people, but more something that shows that the writer cared that the letter makes a good first impression, that it doesn't stink, even if it lay, uh, if it laid on the floor for a while. Uh, inside, assuming that Dimmers eventually opens it, is no. a... Okay. So I do open it. It's a short message. Mm -hmm. Dear Dimmons, I am writing to you in an effort to contact not only you, but the people you have been traveling with as well. I would like to invite all of you to a picnic in Central Square to discuss recent and perhaps future relations. Please visit at your earliest convenience, Charlotte Friendsworth, Headmistress of Central Square. I have a question. Yes. What is Central Square? Central, Central Square. Square Central Square is something that basically everyone in the free city would know about. It is the large, well, grassy square right in front of the Central Library. The equivalent of, well, the, the location where there used to be a private garden. Uh, free city is used to, or rather, used to be a copy of Grand Castle and in this, the, where Grand Castle has in its center a big palace with a private garden. The Free City has a big library and the central square. The purpose of the large, just empty square is to provide a platform for entertainers to really show what, what they can do. Twice a year, people are chosen to be allowed to perform there. And basically, for those couple weeks where they perform there, are literally the center of attention of at least half the city, with hundreds of thousands of people showing up to watch whoever was chosen for that half year. It is basically a, a big multi-purpose stage almost. Except it's not a stage, it's grass. Uh, you could also roll me your uh, artist dice if you have any. Anyone who basically gets shown the letter to see if you maybe know something about that Charlotte Friendsworth as well. I do but have an artist dice. I do too. That's not a name that everyone would immediately recognize or know something about. Apart from fancy, perhaps. So um, how does this work? Do I just roll my relationship thing? Just, just yeah, just roll the relationship die. Hey, you could sing Henrikens right there. You can ignore the outsider ones, but I yep. fucking know shit. All man. right, good job, you two. You don't even need to call fancy. We see the name and we're like, my god. <laughs> uh, potentially, although, uh, well. Charlotte Friendsworth is the, well, the current organizer of the Central Square. She is the one who gets to choose who gets to perform there every half year, essentially. Just like the, all the headmistresses before her, she was chosen by the, the Council of Eight, which are the elected rulers of the Free City, who act right below the artist himself. She has a bit of a reputation as being a risk-taker in who she chooses, because where previous organizers would have chosen performers who have already proven themselves as being good and entertaining, she has often chosen those who were fairly unknown. And, in essence, often catapulting them into famousness. From, from zero to hero, essentially. Hmm. Some of them just temporary, others quite permanently. One primary example of her risk takiness would be some years ago where instead of giving the, the central square to performers like circus artists or poets or whatever she instead allowed one of the lecturers from the local university to just hold a lecture for three, three weeks it was a 
It was a prof- professor from the astronomy branch of the Free City, and, well, people were skeptical, to say the least. A lot of people did turn up on the first day, but they mostly turned up with rotten fruit because they thought, oh, this is going to be boring, so we are going to make this entertaining by throwing things at the boring person. But as it turns out, it was quite the success because over the weeks, more and more people just came to those lectures, not to throw fruit, but to listen because the person just had a very vivid way of words. The lectures all of them going basically deep into the night, into the the cloudless nights even, where he handed out basically miniature telescopes to the people. And what turned out, uh, what was believed to be one of the worst events that has ever been scheduled, turned out to be one of the best. That event is probably the primary reason why why Charlotte, Charlotte Friendsworth has gained a bit of a reputation as a a judge of potential, in a sense. And perhaps also someone who not only handles the choosing of people, but also the making of people. This is perfect. We need her on our side for our... Make us a band. We, 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 are, we want to be a band. This is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Yeah. No, I'll play the, uh, the electric triangle. Yes. They're also magical. It shoots lightning. <laughs> it shocks you every time you use it. Yeah. So we're going for a band now? I um, wasn't born of that. What, what? Guys. <laughs> I mean... I mean, uh, I mean, you're... Gilgalad doesn't really know any musical instruments. I mean, you know, obviously Fancy will sing because she has probably the best singing voice. She has, like, battle mm-hmm. cries and stuff. It's killer vocals. <laughs> so we're going to have this, this great fantasy rock band. It's going to be like Nightwish. You know? Fancy's uh, voice is so powerful, she shattered mm. like Cthulhuian yeah. spirits. Yeah. Solid marble and can, stone. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> when she goes all out in like the, the vocal solo of the song? It's going to be fucking amazing. Maybe we like mind out breaking us. forever. <laughs> yeah. Graham would be a, a great uh, bassist, I think, because he has long hair, you know? So you can just <laughs> so yeah, hang down over yeah, just hang on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I guess we're gonna need a monitor, so eh. take that up. <laughs> Thunder damage! I'll blow out the stadium. <laughs> the stadium oh, literally oh, blows oh, up. Oh. <laughs> we need to top the astronomer. Top the mic blow up the stage. Yep. <laughs> the the mob of viewers loses five members. Oh, just get blown away! Like, oh god, the vocals! It's so the powerful. Mob of, of people. Yep. This mob has a hundred thousand people in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm into it. Well, good work, you two. Like, Demez forgetting the letter, and then Demez and Eric and pulling out their transcoder yeah. ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Anakin will look at Demez over the dinner table and say, well, Do you think it has anything to do with the expedition? I don't think we can discount the possibility. I mean, or even why, the likelihood. I mean, why otherwise would she contact us? I, I can't think of any other reason. I've never had any relations with her before. That you recall, right? Correct. Mm, he grunts. <laughs> well, I guess we should gather up the others. If this... Headmistress seems like a quite important person. Shouldn't have, shouldn't keep her waiting. Is there like a date or something on the letter? It, it just says at your earliest convenience. Okay, well, this is an early convenience. Uh, do we know where the others are, roughly? Do they come back to the house in the evening? or? Uh, the, the problem with that is that no one else can stay at Demez's house. Oh, hmm. It's just yeah, no, it's not like out. an apartment complex. Oh. It's oh. a small apartment above my like office. Dope. You know, like Bender's room, but halfling oh, size. Oh, okay, at, le- so. at least you get to see Demez's office, though. What is actually? I don't care. Will look at some point when Demez has has slunk out. 
to do something, he will actually go and look at the door and be like, what is actually, what's the, like, plaque on this door? <laughs> the plaque? Oh, no. Um, Johnny I hadn't Batman thought of Street. that. It's like, Demis Tristram, uh... Uh, fine shit. Trusty fine? Tristram's trusty like <laughs> acquisitions. Trusty <laughs> trusty acquisitions. Oh, trusted Tristram's trusty tr tr <sighs> reliable acquisitions. Well, <laughs> say that three times fast. Nope. I I actually asked you that before, Jake, and this is what you said back then. There we go. Well, there wow. we go. <laughs> I'm glad you remember. That's a lofty title. It, the, the the font size like like in, continuously like decreases towards like the <laughs> end of the phrase <laughs> so, like the engravers like yep, so trying to job finish description. Oh. not was on, not what was on the window mm -hmm. do you have like an eye on your door you know private eye stuff probably I mean, well wouldn't. well in that case Andrew Kuhn is terribly sorry that he has taken up all this space in Demis's apartment. Yeah, no, I basically have to, like, crawl on the ceiling to get around. <laughs> he's just laid in me, like, oh. Like 50% of the room. Yeah, he'll, he'll apologize for the, for the inconvenience. And then, uh, do we have, like, a bat signal or something we can lit to get Honestly, the Honestly, the whole, the whole place is not that much. I mean, the building was initially built for humans anyway, so it's not, like, really that mm. small. I mean, Graham's in the but city somewhere. <laughs> but maybe it used to be a... In. So we can maybe maybe it used to well, be a sure building meant for humans, great. but a but a one-story building. Um, well, uh, my suggestion would then be that maybe before all this, we have agreed to a, a meeting like each night or something to actually just check with everyone that everyone is okay and alive. So um, or you can just leave a message and then give her, you know, she's probably. But I don't know where to leave the message. Uh, you free probably know free where cities. We stay. Ginormous. No, we didn't. Like, when say, where do you stay? People said, I'm staying at Demes, and then everyone giggled. So I don't know where people are. Well, I don't stay anywhere. Yes, oh. oh, yeah. So, so Graham is okay. a hobo. Uh, I mean, I don't need to sleep or eat. I don't really have reason not to just walk around. I mean, I'm sure this city, if any, has a good nightlife. <laughs> well, you know. You'll party you like know, it's... In, you know, Graham's not <laughs> the only one. Uh, Fancy has, like, put her money into potions of rejuvenation. She hasn't slept for, like, over oh, eight damn. hours. <laughs> She's on speed. <laughs> She's like, whoa! This is it's great! It's experimental potion version, but it's keep you going, girl. <laughs> Crystal rejuve. Like, have, like, this... Man. In, a, in a bathtub somewhere. In, like, a but, big university city, that shit would sell, like, hot bread. That's... That, that's not by the uh, way being facetious. That's actually what Fancy has done with her money to mm. organize this expedition. She has not slept. But she's probably not that hard to find. Just like go and ask, like, where's that lady that does the expedition? And be like, oh, she's like there because. Well, well no matter what, she looks important. <laughs> where's the important lady with the expedition? Very fancy. She's, she's also like, kind of whimsical and marries people a lot. <laughs> So wrong. you've been following her around, is it? Yes. So, no, no, he hasn't. He just woke up during the day and the afternoons and the evenings. Fancy has been organizing and getting in touch with uh, people. And at night, she's been uh, finding old friends and acquaintances. Well. And remembering what Free City used to be like. If Fancy, if you would deem that Fancy is easy enough to find, I suppose Anarkin will seek her out. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Oh, well, sheep! <laughs> Your city! <laughs> How easy is it to find Fancy Minette? <laughs> oh That's boy. Um, where is Fancy Minette? <laughs> if he puts people to the question. Who wanted to yes, uh, where is she? <laughs> oh, Damn oh. Me. Have you seen this woman? <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, there are a lot of supposedly important people in the free city. On the other hand, organizing the, the expedition to a place that quite a few people want to go to, but can't really, and it's going to be dangerous, and oh, what great stories it would make. It's probably plausible, at least, to find her. 
considering how she's been doing this nonstop for the past uh, several days. Where did her gold pieces go? This. <laughs> but there's like three young like writers who all want to be the person to like immortalize the story of how this place was freed so that they can get eternal fame being the person writing the, the book about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Fancy has her hanger on <laughs> on. <laughs> An entourage. I suppose well, Graham will that just randomly show up at some point but go, oh, I'm back here. Alright. <laughs> In that case, she uh, fancy will see Anrikun come, uh, come uh, cruising through the throng of people around her. Oh man, amazing! <laughs> such conviction, such confidence, such strength to be yes. able to to swim through those people. It it it, it means that she matters to him. That's how she'll <laughs> interpret it. Yes, he eyes will. will light up at finally seeing him active for the first time in over two weeks. He will, uh, he will cough a little bit and look at your fancy and says, Yes, finally. I have been searching for you for a few hours. Uh, looking at all the people around. And he will uh, say, I trust that you are well. Fancy is beaming. It, 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 perhaps the first signs of fatigue are starting to show <laughs> her face. As she, as she downs more potions. <laughs> <laughs> glug, 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 glug. How many of those have you actually been drinking, Fancy? Uh, we've been here three days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you can stop whenever you want to. Uh, That's right. <laughs> it's a very expensive addiction, if I go. I'm going to find you in like a... Those things are 100 gold pieces of pop. Oh, I gosh. Goodness me. Yeah, living in high life. Well, Anakin will launch in and says, There has been a letter from a Charlotte Friendsworth. Uh, she's the headmistress of Central Square. Uh, she's the one who decides who gets on the big stage, uh, as far as I know. Oh, we're, we're going on the big stage? You hear that? Every- <laughs> 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 um... Anakin says, well, she wants to meet us for a picnic uh, quite oh, soon. I, I love picnics. Uh, yes, I, I know it's you do. weather for a picnic. It, we haven't had a good time to celebrate recently. It gets you out in the sun. Picnic. <laughs> Anakin, you know, squints up at the sun suspiciously. And then he says, well, uh, it is at the earliest convenience, so uh, we should... If you could meet us back at, I guess, Demessa's office. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'll follow you. <laughs> he nods. All right, then. Uh, <coughs> oh. And then he'll... So after, like, dismissing the whirlwind, <laughs> fancy <laughs> will, like, follow after Henry Kidd. I will make his Thinking way back. about how amazing this city is. <laughs> maybe, Eric- maybe she should live here after all. Oh yeah, it's a pretty great city. Do 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 do. We'll open up the door. I know. Graham's like left there standing alone. And everyone's dismissed. Like I'm fucking following too. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, he just pass and he'll just follow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, oh, well, there we go. He was just he was just like paying some orphans to like find find Dumas's place. Uh, just give them the money and like no, you know it's fine. <laughs> So I suppose slowly begin to, you know, do that thing where he slowly catches up, but it's sort of a little awkward because he's still too far away to really talk to you, but he's not really going to call out, like, hey! Yeah. And he doesn't want to run because it's not dignified. You know? yeah. <laughs> he's like in yelling conversation range. Yep. It would just be awkward to try to have a conversation. Yeah. We all know that when you want to oh, get yeah. someone's attention, but you can't really... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just sneak up and poke them. F- Fancy walks with energy with almost like a skip in her step and then she like slows down because Anrikin doesn't move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't. He he will look to her and say, well, you look very shipper. You'll, I suppose this uh, expedition of ours is a big thing then. Yes. I haven't slept since we've arrived. <laughs> he l- looks at her, seems seemingly looking for maybe the pall of undeath upon her, but then he shakes his head. In that no, no. sentence, 
That said, it totally rings with the same truth that all of her other truths do. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, it would be nice to do something uh, that people would like for a change. I haven't been much of that lately. Yes. Would be. Besides, we're heading to Arden Crest anyway. You know, Might as well bring some friends. And they're friends. Seems reasonable enough. And they're enemies. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm sure we can handle those. Yes. We need someone to talk to, otherwise it'd just be boring. He nods. And uh, opens the door into Demessa's office. I got a great sponsorship, by the way. <laughs> Food, I know, like, Vivo, like the best. Food, gear, ship paid for. Don't have to worry about a thing. A single copper piece. It's all covered. We go there, and it just has like this huge the sale. It's just advertisement. Looks <laughs> 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 like a race car. Like, yeah. Uh. There's a lot of generous patrons out there who who heard about it, and want to see this good art restored where it belongs. And I did it. Do we have any additional protection on this journey? Because we're if we're like retaking this place, do we have anything to sort of like when we move on, do we have anything to fortify it with? No. People. Yeah, uh, people. It, it, basically like we're like walking these people to like there and we'll like escort them to Ardent Crest and then mm -hmm. they're on their own. Could actually sheep, I have a question question then. Could and can could I use my uh, my influence with the Doom's enemies to maybe ask around town a little bit, see if we can pick up maybe a mercenary company of of some slight skill to act as a military es escort or at least protection from these people, because I mean they're civilians and I I, I, th I feel some extra muscle helping them out would be a good idea if nothing else for when we have left. Uh, well, since the, the reason why the, the pier was destroyed and the area is not really traveled that much anymore is bandits, the Doom's enemies wouldn't really be too worried about that. Okay. I, I don't think the, the relationship die would really apply here. Okay. Never mind then. And the Doom's enemies care deeply about setting up the pier again. Uh, like my my <laughs> thought my thought was that since that's the area where the Doom hangs out, sorta, maybe there are actually people who'd be like, Yes, I would like to go there and start killing off things. But no, yeah. no right. I mean the the Doom hangs out quite some distance away from Arden Crest. I mean I was yeah, okay, if you say so. If you say so. I the proportions on the map uh had me fooled them, I suppose. It's a few hundred kilometers still to Stalingrad. Wow, that's... Wait, what? That it's is... farther than... It, you know, mean, there, it took us, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. at, at the bottom right corner, there's the, uh, the little like scale thing for how many kilometers it is. Wow, we yeah, really traveled far from Coppergate to the Free City, then. <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah, particularly because it wasn't a straight line. <laughs> 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 That's why even yep. in carriage, it was a two-week travel. Goodness gracious. Yeah, imagine how long it took us to get there from Myrton. <laughs> uh, do you think if we kill the bandits, Anrakin could uh, use some sort of a ritual to bring them back as protection for these people? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> now you're talking Arakan's language. We can help each other here, I think. That sounds possible. Perhaps. The three of us pouring our power together, nothing can stop us. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, who d who protects us? <laughs> the dark host. <laughs> like, Those who would once have hunted you. <laughs> we are bound them into enslavement. <laughs> the bandits walk up like, hey, you know, this is our road. You just rip the bloody skeletons out of their bodies. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then after all that, I rolled a one. Fail forward. <laughs> <laughs> The other turned to look at you. <laughs> well, we still meant that thing about the money. Spend <laughs> <laughs> it, skeletons, now. You know what? I can summon. I can create ghouls now. So, mm. so can we I. can we can we can oh, see I. this area with ghouls. 
That's probably that's probably a good idea, right? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. If they if they kill the body and we let uh -huh. it be there, it's gonna turn into one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As long as they do not attack, you know, they're the innocent people. Well, I mean, you know, they, that's kind of an important part. What's gonna happen? <laughs> you know. Who's ever and heard if, of a vegetarian ghoul? And if your raising of ghouls goes wrong, maybe you can expand that the dice with the, the yeah. enemies of the Doom after all. Yeah, it'd be like, oh, they're mm. undead to hunt here. Well, mm, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Just a massive scheme to <laughs> fucking get the enemies of the Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Try to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> this massive scheme to like contrive some sort of dilemma <laughs> that makes the enemies of the do care about sending like a mercenary company. Uh, you know, I. Honestly, I, I thought the area was closer, so I was like, oh, maybe there's like undead and stuff in the area. Maybe that'll entice them, but yeah, I guess it's kind of protected. Not for long. <laughs> yes. Once we have erected the doom ward around everything, that'll be great. So yes, back to the fact that now, uh, like, we're like we don't have like the supplies of materials like to set up like an entirely new base camp. It's just like we have like an entourage of people that are going to be with us to harden the rest. Mm -hmm. so let's just hope that these pilgrims are fanatics. Uh, yes. No no, 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 no. The real fanatics are taking the long walking. C would be cheating. Oh, so these are more like, you know... These are people who have family in the area and want to go see them? Or these are, like, traders who want to try and, like, establish, like, lucrative routes because they're, con they're like, you know, disconnected from sure. trading right now? Or these are for, like, the pilgrims who aren't as fanatic. Right. No, uh... No, they they uh, know the risk. No Warhammer flagellants coming with us. No, those would be going like the like walking the entire like yeah. mountain range. Yeah. Mm. Well. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, mm. I didn't really. I thought. Uh, yeah. I. Uh, mm, I should have asked before because now I'm like, hmm. Could use my artist die a five to be like. If you supply some more stuff, like protection and things, maybe we they can build something in recompense. Be like, yes. Uh, let's go. Let's go talk to that uh, that lady we have a picnic with. Maybe she has. You know, we don't know what she wants. Yet. Let's go to the picnic. picnic. That's why right, there's a picnic. Let's go to what the picnic. What are we here for? Well, that sounds great. <laughs> and we can look over to grab. <laughs> when did you get here? He's just like, you know, while you stood in the doorway, he just sort of walked up and like, as if he was here the entire time, you know. And he looks over to Demez, are we ready for the picnic? Do we need to bring anything? Like, do I need to like pack something? Are we going to bring something? Like wine? or I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, the letter seemed to imply that all of that would be supplied by the headmistress. Oh, but well, you should very well know that when you go to like a party or a ga it's like polite, like whenever you visit someone's home to like bring like a gift. And we can looks through his uh, his stuff. I do actually have three cans of well preserved meat, <laughs> so we can br we can basically be spam to the picnic. I mean, they are in fact still well preserved. Right. That alchemical preservative, really good. Woo! All right. Oh, I'll, I'll right. bring I'll bring a can of spam. Yes, yeah, it's not well preserved, high quality meat. It's just well preserved meat. Yes, yeah, very well preserved. The meat itself. <laughs> and he says, "Well, then, great. Our earliest convenience is right now. Let's go." <laughs> Bag of candies. Take what? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all he has. Priya candles. You know. What, what candies has Gilgalad bought? Well, they're um, sweet types. Mostly. We're standing around. There's a picnic to go to. We're walking towards <laughs> the picnic while looking in the candy jar. Well, I mean, why not? Yeah, you, yes. Grand picnic. 
Yes, I'm uh, not entirely sure which way that is. Uh, fancy, perhaps uh, you would show show the way. It's Central Square. I have I've passed it multiple times, but I can't say I would know where to go from here. It's a square in the central area. It's next to the big library. It's the only place I can find. Stop. Uh, yes, <laughs> of course, there. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, well, I could show you, Graham, but you'll have to move faster. We uh, we move to the picnic, sheep. Mm-hmm. Do you have, right, a, do you have a separate square. encounter map for this picnic? I do, actually. All there right. squares on it. <laughs> Is there squares on this encounter map for the picnic? Maybe. He's begun oh. hiding them, so... Oh. There's, 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 like, ants. <laughs> Circle of death! Giant ants! Oh, no! Our <laughs> <Yes>. minions... <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, when when well, giant ants threaten a picnic, <laughs> and they can rip their bloody skeletons. <laughs> <Yeah. out. laughs> I think that's solving and complicating. In the process, his spell misfires, and the spam is revivified as a horrible and meat monster. All the other guests. No. Oh, I, I, the skeleton out of the spam. Yeah, the spam. Oh, man, that would be the worst. <laughs> It's a putrid zombie Why spam. Even in there? It's a putrid spam zombie. Anyways. Uh, turns out finding the central square is pretty easy. Because you just walk towards the largest building in the city. Which is visible from at least a few spots. Uh, the central square itself is... A... Well, not exactly a square. More like a, a half circle, really. Big enough to house a whole lot of things. A vast, empty space that seems somewhat, well, paradoxical almost to the otherwise rather crowded and well-used city. It is surrounded by what almost seems like a wall, except it is a wall out of offices and rooms and buildings that eventually attach to the, to the, the, the library and the academy complex in the middle. Uh, the big gate isn't really a gate anymore that leads into the, the square because there used to be a gate, but the gate was removed. So it's just, you can go there whenever, really. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, currently on the on the large grassy field, there are a couple of people, mostly it looks like gardeners, maintaining the grass, which does look very well maintained. It has survived the, the reasonably harsh winter without any sort of orange spots or things that look like they shouldn't be there. It's just pristine, green, grass, same height, all over the place. Really not much activity going on, apart from perhaps half a dozen gardeners spread around the place, most tending the grass, others tending the bushes. As you essentially enter the area, however, there does seem to be one of the people actually noticing your approach and in return approaches you. As the person is dressed in somewhat fine clothing, although a rather clear statement of him being an assistant or secretary of some sort, a sort of suit-like appearance that isn't too vivid, as to not take away from potential guests or from the potential host. Sort of something that makes him blend into the background more easily. He approaches you with a small bow, essentially, as he looks at you somewhat questioningly. Uh, I presume that you are not just simply visiting this place, yes? Unless, of course, you are, in which case, feel free, but there's very little to see here. The actual entertainment will start in, oh, it's a good three more months. Won't even see any of the preparations until at least next month. And I can, we'll take a deep breath and push Dimas in front of him. Yeah, Dimas uh, stumbles like 50 feet forward because he was already stepping up. And Anakin is surprisingly strong. 
Anyway, yep, no, so Demis uh, writes up and says, Nope, uh, we are not just visiting. We have um, an invitation here, and he will procure it from uh, Charlotte Friendsworth, the headmistress. The the assistant will take the letter, just take a taking a brief look at it, handing it back, nodding once, saying, Yes, uh, please do wait here. I'll go fetch her. So he hurries off. Uh, he hurries off into a a door at the at the one of the walls surrounding this place, essentially leading into a small room. Although what exactly it is is hard to see from the outside. Uh, and it doesn't take more than a couple of moments until a whole like swath, if that's the right word, word a whole bunch of assistants and secretaries in mostly identical clothing hurry out. Some of them carrying well, blankets or rather a large rug. Some of them carrying pillows. Others carrying trays with various things. And followed. Uh, and following them is a differently dressed, definitely on the older side, uh, a woman. Who I will just show you. A token, and also show you the the picnic that the assistants very quickly prepare. Only a slight distance away from the door they came out of, so some distance for you to walk still. Three months. At least we will not miss the festivities, because they will be in three months' time. We will have plenty of time to head back here to the free city. Uh, she is dressed in fine, although not as vivid clothing as would be usual. Usually it is the more important a person thinks he is, the more ridiculous their outfit becomes, the more reds and blues and clashing colors they use. She, quite the opposite. That she's important is very much visible at her just general stance, really. She moves with very confident steps and in the in the presence of her assistants doesn't quite behave as you would think some some snobby noble would but she is actually helping setting this up taking away trays from the assistants and generally just apparently trying to make their lives a bit easier while at the same time keeping her kind of grace that definitely marks her as an, a person used to authority she will smile towards you, gesture at the many pillows, picking one of her one for herself. But not sitting down yet, as she seems to be waiting for you to do it first. Also the tray has disappeared into the background. There we go. She seems to recognize us. She does, yes. Mm. Wait, what did you do, Graham? <laughs> Where did I? <laughs> Where did you enter? I just go her? from one side to another one. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to thank you. Let's You will not satisfied that you're all sitting, sitting down yourself, gesturing at the trays, which seem to contain many different sorts of baked baked sweets, baked goods, from pies to muffins to to strange creations of potentially art which might also be edible and most of them marked with a or most of them having a small paper sign in front which marks where exactly they are from both the the street address and the name of the bakery it's also a picture for for water and wine glasses and well, basically everything she does gesture at the goods for a moment, hoping, perhaps, that you appreciate the offer. Already there. Yeah, Gilda <laughs> is also going to take something to, yeah. you know. Fancy has, out. like, a sheet of paper out already where she'll, like, begin scribbling down the names, like, the pastry she likes and where they're from. She'll probably lose that sheet of paper for the next time she's in Free City. <laughs> now this is her moment. She she does give a, a rather warm smile at the at the quick reaction by by Fancy and Gilgalad, and doesn't even even mm. seem to be bothered that Graham and Enrican might not be grabbing stuff left and right. Graham just gives sort of a polite smile, like you know. 
she will look at you and say, Greetings, I am glad that you could make it so quickly. I did not expect you to be, well, do you have free time with all the things that have been going on recently? I do fear that our first meeting and perhaps impressions of each other have already been somewhat tainted. To get to the point, uh, the two women who you've encountered on occasion, Bezrina and Rochelle, I'm not sure if they ever mentioned their names, they work for me. I can promise you that they have never intended to cause unnecessary harm to anyone or get you to harm those who you would consider allies. I do believe that we have both been investigating the same phenomenons and tried doing things to counteract it. She pauses and sighs a bit. Initially, Bezrina and Rochelle were instructed to follow you, Enriken, because I believe that you were in some way involved. But it did quickly become apparent that we, I believe, are in fact on the same side. And now after what I believe has happened in Coppergate, my worries are most certainly gone. I can <clears throat> smile, slightly bitterly smile and says, well, our um, worries have sort of taken a turn for the worse with what happened in Coppergate. What? exactly did happen. The information I possess is odd, to say the least. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Making like a gesture with like a full hand over a demez. Hmm. Charlotte lock looks to demez. I'm I must have missed the question. <laughs> what exactly happened in Coppergate? Well, really, we can get to the questions later. If you need time to enjoy my offers of peace, then do feel free. Oh. <laughs> Your, uh... uh... Well... Yes. Well, um... Do you want the story of how we left, or the entire thing? Because they're both exciting. Well, I've got plenty of time. My schedule for today is fairly empty. And now that uh, you're here, it is, in fact, empty. So feel free to tell me what you wish me to tell. What you wish to tell me. Well, Demes, if you could uh, refrain from sharing too much information, that would be appreciated. Very well. Um, well, uh, I guess the basics of what you really need to know are that, uh, we, uh, tracked down and encountered, um, a man named Granith, who seemed to be behind, or at least, uh, very high up on this whole chain of the nasties, as it were, and we, uh, we disposed of him. And uh, it seems that he was working in, in deeply with the Greys, uh, well, at least one of them. And um, so we, we became wanted in, in Coppergate and were imprisoned. Uh, and then, you know, knowing that it might not turn out too well for us were it to go through due legal process, uh, we decided to exit on our own terms and come here instead. That was probably a wise decision, although... The gears of the architect's bureaucracy do turn slowly, but they turn inevitably. Still, better than rotting in a cell for weeks until something starts to happen, doesn't it? It is strange that, well, I think our initial misunderstanding started and perhaps ended with 
the grey that is, I believe, called Warwick. Both Bezrena and Rochelle acted in their best knowledge and attempted to give you a position in which you could potentially take care of one of the servants of whatever is happening on your own terms rather than encountering him later. But it did turn out that he did seem to be the key who let you get at this granite in the first place. It is fortunate that things happened as they did. Still, I'm not one to want to dwell too much on past mistakes, but rather look towards the future. You have proven yourself rather tenacious and capable. To the point where I would like to propose that we work together. Doing people, what, precisely? Well, people come to me for help with increasing frequency these days. And I do find myself unable to do much. Our work together would consist essentially in communication and very little else. I would like to relay some of the requests I have been receiving to you for you to consider. I do believe that some of these might in fact be related to the things, although I cannot be sure. Still, making friends with people can only be beneficial. Mm. Well, Anarchin looks around. We have sort of considered going more uh, official with our band. We have been <coughs> together for quite some time now, and it seems to have worked out fairly well for us in that time. Maybe it will be time to sort of formalize this. Looks to the others. Official in its pure sense is a dangerous word, though, these days. It means rules and laws, stipulations, quotas even. I would more consider it a sign that we are open for business. She nods. Perhaps I can be your first customer then. Okay. Although perhaps not so much a customer as a middleman. Nods. Seems reasonable. A uh, patron of the arts of sorts, although the art in this case is different from sculpting a statue. More dramatic people might call it sculpting a world. The greatest art piece, perhaps. American smiles. Perhaps not the greatest, but certainly the most important. Yeah. We uh, are currently bound for the north. We are going on an expedition. I have heard as much. And I do approve of the idea to help the Oracle and her followers, who do seem to be in dire need of help at the very moment. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I do believe the rumors of bandits to be ever so slightly optimistic. How so? Well, the area around Arden Crest was, is, in a sense, protected. The guild and in there take it upon themselves to keep it free, not only from wild beasts who might attack travelers around the areas or even the villages, but of course also bandits and those who would want to use and abuse the populace living under their protection. It would take a not only a significant force, but also a force that is well equipped 
to deal with a determined and large flying tenor.